Hi everybody, it's Mr. Hamilton here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what is static electricity, an introduction to our electricity unit if you're in my class. What we know from the past, hopefully you know this, and you remember this from your review of chemistry, is that protons are positive, electrons are negative, and neutrons are neutral. And we have these protons and neutrons that make up the nucleus. They're much, much larger than the electrons. And the electrons orbit in these orbitals around uh, the nucleus. A lot of an atom is empty space. And what we're going to find with this whole idea of static electricity is what's happening is these electrons are being freed from the individual atoms. And as those electrons are being freed, we can charge some things negatively, and then the things that they've been freed from become positively charged. So electrons can move from one atom to the next, protons and neutrons cannot. So what is electricity? Electricity is a form of energy. It's caused by the movement of charged particles, so electrons and ions. We can, we can have charged particles that can move as well. Uh, for the most part, it's electrons, but we can also have certain charged particles move in certain circumstances. So static electricity is where charges build up in one place. And so this is a picture of a Van de Graaff generator, and maybe you've had the chance to see someone use this or use it yourself, where it becomes positively charged. There's a buildup of positive charge at the top because electrons are taken away and moved down below. As it becomes positively charged, when you touch it, you also become positively charged and all your hair molecules become positively charged and they repel one another because like charges repel. Current electricity is a little bit different. It is actually the movement of these charged particles. They're not just building up in one place, but they're moving from one place to another. And so we're most commonly see current electricity in the devices that we use every day, everything from our cell phones to our stoves to our computers. Uh, but it's also in lightning. It, lightning builds up these static charges. And when we finally have lightning strike, that's where a current is formed. So static charge builds up when one material transfers its electrons to another material. Often this happens when two objects are rubbed together. We call this charging by friction. You've probably uh, seen that your parents or you, if you do help do the laundry, put bounce sheets in the laundry. And that helps the friction not charge things as much. If you don't put a bounce sheet in, you'll find that your clothes end up being very, very uh, stuck together by these static charges. And so that's what we see a picture of here. And then the cats coming along as well, being uh, attracted to those uh, charged clothes. Uh, probably the most common example you've done of this whole idea of charging by friction is you've taken balloons, you've rubbed them on your head, and then you stuck them to the wall. Or in the case of this girl, if you have very long hair, after that charged balloon is rubbed against your hair, your hair has one charge, and the balloon has the, uh, the opposite charge, and they're attracted to each other. And so your hair can be made to uh, look pretty goofy at times. The key here is that one object has a stronger affinity for electrons. An affinity just means a pull. Um, if you have an affinity for something, it means you like that thing. Um, and then the other object will become the opposite charge. So something's neutral if it has the same number of protons and the same number of electrons. Something is negatively charged if there are more electrons than anything else on it. And something's positively charged if there are more protons than anything else on it. So that's what's happening with the balloon in your hair. One of the things is getting electrons, and one of them is giving electrons. You want to know why? We'll look at the next slide. So this is called an electrostatic series, and it shows which things have a weaker hold on electrons and what things have a stronger hold on electrons. And as you go down, the things at the bottom have a stronger hold on electrons. So if you rub them with something up top, they're going to take the electrons off the thing higher up and add them to what's being rubbed down below. So what it says here in the box, this is an electrostatic series is a list of materials that have been arranged according to their ability to hold electrons, their affinity for or their pull for electrons. So uh, if we go back to this human hair and a balloon, so we've got a rubber balloon and human hair that we saw in the last slide. The rubber balloon has a strong hold on electrons. The human hair has a weaker hold on electrons. So pause the video and think for a second, what's going to be positive and negatively charged? And then we'll take it up. Did you pause the video? 
All right, so the rubber balloon is going to take the electrons, it's going to become negatively charged, and your hair is, has a weak hold on electrons, it's going to give them up, and it's going to become positively charged. So your hair is positive, the balloon is negatively charged. And so this same thing happens when you brush your hair. Uh, originally, your hair is neutral and the brush is neutral. But if we have some type of brush, and, and let's assume that this is some, uh, the comb is plastic or something. And so plastic is kind of the material that we see down here at the bottom line. So because plastic is further down and your human hair is further up, the plastic is going to have a stronger pull on the electrons and it's going to take the electrons from the human hair to the comb. So that's why what you see happening here is you get more electrons in the comb than there is in your human hair. Your human hair becomes positively charged. The comb becomes negatively charged. And this is especially the case when the air is very dry because it allows this to happen very easily. And charges are not able to uh, bond with the water molecules that would be in the air when it's not as dry. So the comb has a stronger affinity for electrons than your human hair becomes negatively charged, human hair positively charged. As we wrap up, let's just briefly talk about a few different terms. The first term we want to talk about is insulators. Insulators are materials in which electrons cannot move easily through. So most things that are not metals are really good insulators. For example, a rubber is what a, this ducky is made of. Um, it is a great insulator. So wood, rubber, um, cotton, all these things are good insulators. Not only do they keep you warm if you had like a cotton sweater on, but they also don't allow electricity to travel through them very well. Don't allow electrons to travel through them. Another thing is resistors or semiconductors. Uh, we've probably heard about semiconductors or you've probably heard about semiconductors in regards to computers, right? We have semiconductors in a lot of computers. Um, and then we have this silicone that is used and the, that is considered to be a metalloid. So electrons move fairly well through them, but there's some resistance. And typically we want that because we do want some resistance in most circuits. So that's an example of a semiconductor uh, or a resistor, a, um, a metalloid like silicone. And lastly, we have conductors. Conductors are things that electrons easily flow through. And these would be your metals. So gold and silver would be fairly conductive. Typically, we don't use those to allow electrons to travel through just because they're so expensive. So what we use instead are things like copper. That's the most common type of metal. But we could also use aluminum. You might have aluminum wiring in your houses. Um, it ha does have some safety issues with it. And so oftentimes, if you do have aluminum wiring in your homes, uh, you've had something done like called pigtailing, where they've taken copper wires at the plugs and just made that just because copper is a little bit better of a conductor though aluminum is cheaper and that's why it was used a little bit at first the last concept that we're going over here is the idea of a ground a ground is an object that can supply electrons to a positively charged object and remove electrons from a negatively charged object and so the reason it's called a ground is because the ground has so many electrons and protons that it's very easily able to do this. So if we touch anything to the ground, it grounds an object. It's, a lot, it's able to basically make that charge essentially neutral. So if you're in my class, that's the homework you're gonna be working on. Uh, let's just look at this cartoon quickly here as we wrap up. So one, uh, this is a couple with another couple at their house and uh, he's trying to make himself look like an electric eel by charging himself on the carpet. So his wife says this, he's, she says, the Schaefer's must be quite impressed that you're electric, Sid. I'm sure they haven't noticed at all that you're rubbing across the carpet, enjoy. So I hope that was helpful and all the best as you continue to learn more about electric.